coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm the board game teacher. Today we're taking a look at Prime Climb by Math for Love. In looking at the report card for Prime Climb, I give the number of players a B plus. And the reason I give it a B plus is that it plays two to four players. And in classroom settings, I do like to see games with larger numbers of students available to play, simply because it makes it so that you can incorporate larger groups. In a game like this, anything more than four players would just be pure chaos and wouldn't be fun anymore. So it really does fit um, what it needs to. Uh, and if you're playing at home, I think this one is fantastic because the smaller group size would really work well for a family setting if you're playing this at home with your kids. For the learning, I give this game an A+. And I give this game an A plus because this game achieves something amazing. I've never seen a game so good at teaching and motivating students to learn their basic arithmetic facts. If you want to get more information about how it teaches the arithmetic facts, then you'll have to watch my extended video where I show the board and I talk a little bit about how the game is played. This game really does a fantastic job at teaching addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. For the fun, I give this game a B plus, um, which really surprises me given the fact that you know when I first looked at it, to be honest, I was not hopeful. It, it, the game has two mechanics in it which I really don't like. One is which is roll and move, where you roll a dice and you move that many spaces. Um, and I'll explain that in just a moment. And the second is, you know, where you land on somebody, oops, and you bump them back to start. And it's a race to 101. So if you're at like 99 and you get bumped back to start, it seems like a big deal. But this is what I'm saying now is that it's not a big deal. And the roll and move is not as bad as you might think, you know, with some other games like Snakes and Ladders, whereas if you get bumped back to start, that could be a huge deal. In this game, with the dice that you're using, you're, for starters, you're using um, decahedrons, so you're using 10-sided dice. And so with those two dice that you're rolling, you're rolling two dice, you can take them and with the, where you have two pawns on the board, and you can add, subtract, multiply, or divide by the numbers that you're at. So if you're already at 10, and you roll a 10, we can just do 10 times 10 is 100, and now you're just one space away from the finish line. So with the, like I said, with the roll and move, which I normally don't like, the fact that you can have the options to use any of the arithmetic facts, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, gives you a whole range of options and choices to make. And the choices are what makes this game interesting and fun. And it, because you can strategize and you can make strategic decisions because sometimes it'll be more to your advantage to actually go backwards than forwards. And again, I'll explain more of that in the extended video if you're interested. So I give the time for this game a B. I give it a B as the time says 20 to 60 minutes. Now, 60 minutes would be sort of your upper limit, and if you're playing four players, then it becomes a little more challenging to finish because the four players are all, you know, maybe keep knocking each other back to the start and things. So the more people there, it just gets a little more crowded. But if everybody's on track, then you can still finish within a reasonable time. And part of what I look at with this game too is, does it matter if you finish? I mean, it's nice to bring the game to a logical conclusion and everything, but if you're playing this game with the purpose that I'm playing this game, which is really just to encourage my students to have a fun way to learn some of their basic math facts, to play a game and to have fun while doing it and to learn while doing it, then you know, I don't care if they don't finish. And, you know, honestly, I don't know that they care if they don't finish. Because, you know, if they can just even have an opportunity to play a game in class, they're excited for that. They're happy for that. Even if they don't finish the game, they're happy that they just got to play a game during class. And there's a lot of, of good learning that happens here, which I've already talked about. So while it's nice if you can finish the game, I don't think it's a big deal if you don't. The idea is to just play, have fun, and learn while doing it.
So for the cost, I'm going to give this game a B um, because I um, right now the only place I'm seeing it for sale in Canada is at indigo.ca and at indigo it's $30 um, which is a fair price I think for a game like this. Now having said that uh, once uh, levelup.ca gets this in stock then I think that she Maui will be able to get that at a cheaper price. So hopefully by the time you're watching this then she'll have them in stock. If not then hopefully she'll have them soon. So that's going to be it for Prime Climb. Um, hopefully you saw something in here that caught your interest. Hopefully you're going to go out and get your own copy of Prime Climb. I think it's a wonderful game. This is exactly the kind of thing that I needed when I was younger. I know that my math facts were very poor when I was a, a, a student and it was only through playing games that my math facts improved. So it was exactly something like this that I could have used and so hopefully you know, you will consider getting this for your classroom for those students who maybe just need a little more motivation, a little more reason to do their math facts. Until next time, I'm Craig Thompson Wood, the board game teacher, saying thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back to school?